Hello everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level, and this is just a quick tutorial on advanced pull vectors in Blender. So I've got this very simple uh, leg rig here. I've got a hip control set up, and I've got a foot control set up, and I can rotate this to move the ankle. And this is just using an IK uh, constraint that I've added, and I've talked about in other videos as well. I've done a full introduction to IK as well, and I just want to get a head start on this one. You can head over to Gumroad to download this file if you want to follow along as well. So right now I can move this, but I cannot control the knee, unfortunately. And I need to add a pull vector or a pull target onto the IK to achieve this. So we need a new bone for this. So I'm just going to go to edit mode and I want the pull vector to be in line with the knee. So if I select the knee joint here and hit E for extrude and then Y, it'll lock it to that Y axis. I'll put it about here. And I'm just going to select the bone and I actually want to uh, remove this from the parent because it was extruded from this bone. It is right now a child of that bone. So I'm going to click on this and do Alt P, clear parent. Now I'm just going to grab this and just move it forward. I'm going to do one last thing. I'm just going to rename this pull. Back in pose mode, I'm going to select on the IK constraint bone. And for pull target, it's going to be leg rig. And for the bone, it's going to be pull. Now you'll have this issue where the leg has moved 90 degrees. That is a axis issue. And I'll show you why right now. If I go to the rig and turn on axis, you'll see that it's always trying to point the X axis to the pull vector. So this X axis wants to point to the pull vector. If I go back to edit mode, you'll see that on my foot, the X axis by default is actually pointing this way. So I need to grab these two bones, go to item, and for the roll, I'm just gonna roll it towards the pull vector, which is probably gonna be 90 degrees. So now when I go back to pose mode, the leg is no longer flipping. I can grab this now and it's going to move my knee, which is working out perfectly. And I can grab the foot and I can position the knee wherever I want. This is great. What you might run into is flipping. So say the pull vector is over here and you move the leg around, you're going to get this flipping. And I'm just going to show you a couple ways to avoid that. What I've seen a lot of people do is they'll take the pull vector and just parent it to the foot. So here's the foot control and I'll go to edit mode. I'll select the pole, I'll shift select on the foot, do control P, keep offset. Now when I move the foot controller, it's moving the knee as well. And when I rotate the foot, it's also moving the knee. There's a couple of problems with this and I can still get flipping. So see back here, if I bring the foot behind the character, I'm getting this flipping. So it's not always ideal to have that parented. What you almost want to do is normalize it between the hip and the foot. Almost that it's always halfway in between here and here. And we're actually going to build this with a couple constraints. But first thing we need to do is add a couple more joints. So I'm in right view now. And I'm just going to go to edit mode. I'm going to actually go to x ray as well. And I'm going to go to view, local view, toggle local view, I don't need the mesh uh, visible while I'm here. I'm going to select on the hip controller here and just hit E again to extrude this. And I'm just going to bring it right down to the ankle control. So I can do this either by snapping or by moving my cursor here, selecting on this control and doing selection to cursor. That's great. And I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to do Shift S, cursor to selected. That puts the cursor in the midpoint between the hip and the foot. There's other ways to do this. Uh, I just kind of prefer to do it this way. Now, make sure you have individual origins turned on. I'm just going to scale this down. So it's about here. So remember, that's still pointing at the foot. I'm going to do Shift D, Shift S, selection to cursor. I'm going to do Shift D again. And I'm just going to turn on my snapping tool here. Make sure it's on vertex and just snap this to the foot. We're almost done here. We just got to do a couple more things. This controller here and this controller here that we added. Let's actually shift click on the hip and do control P, keep offset. And this controller here, I'm going to select on the foot, do control P, keep offset. I'm just going to show you what we have if we go back to pose mode. So now I have this moving with the foot and I have this moving with the hip. I want this bone though to always be halfway in between these two. 
And I'm going to do this with copy transforms. So I'm going to come to the constraints and select on the foot control down here. Shift click on this middle bone here and do control shift C, copy transforms. Now it's going to move that right down to there right away. And I actually want to put this at 0.5. I'll show you why in one minute. I'm going to select on this controller up here and shift click back on that middle one and do control shift C, copy transforms. Now, because that one is below the top one, it's going to override everything. So right now, if I just play with this dial, you'll see that it's at 100% and it's going right to that hip control. I'm going to move this up in my constraint stack. Now, nothing's changed, but if you just toggle the copy transforms down here, you'll see that now it's moved back to its original position. That's why I put my cursor there to find that midpoint between these two uh, hip and foot joints. Now, watch what happens when I move the foot. See how that's always staying halfway in between? And that's great. That means that I can now parent my pull to that. So I'll click on the pull vector. I'll shift click on this middle joint here. I'll go to edit mode and I'll do control P, keep offset. Now when I move this, it's always keeping that pull vector halfway between that bone. And I still get the rotation of the foot because of that copy transform. I'm gonna add one more constraint. One thing I don't like is if I come over here, I don't like that this bone is still pointing down. That's not really ideal. I can fix this by rotating the foot, but I don't really want that to happen all the time. So I'm gonna add one more constraint. From this bone down here, I'm gonna shift click on this one. I'm gonna do control shift C, and I'm gonna add a damped track. Now, when I move this, see how it's always pointing to the foot? Let's bring back the geometry. View, local view, toggle local view. So now you can see that that foot is always halfway in between, and it's gonna be very, very tough to flip this. Over here, obviously there's gonna be a flip, but that would be a pretty extreme pose, but I can always rotate the foot out of that flip. So I'll turn the rig off in front, and you can see how it's deforming the leg now. And I'm always getting that nice pole vector calculation. I can still come in here and move this. There's one other great thing about this setup. I can always turn off these dials. So let's say you want the foot to be sort of in world space where the animator can just pick a pole vector location. I can now put this anywhere. So that's a pretty simple setup to how I would actually build a dynamic pole vector in Blender. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If you want to see how I built this initial rig, uh, be sure to sign up for my Patreon. Um, I've just sort of started it and just started loading content up to it. And I have a couple patrons that I like to support right now. Uh, Alex Barton, Amin, Christopher Lee, Jim Smith, and Shane Curry. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. Uh, it means the world to me. And it allows me to put more content on YouTube while putting more exclusive content on Patreon at the same time. Um, I want to continue to do that where I'll put shorter videos on YouTube, but really go more in-depth onto my Patreon account. And it allows me to explore more things in rigging in a quicker manner. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.